His first hit was an album called David Jams, Part One. <laughs> Second hit was David Jams, Part Two. <laughs> His third and biggest hit was an album called Jam David. <laughs> People had to really like you in David's time to buy your records because there weren't any record players then. <laughs> there weren't any record players then. They'd take the albums home and sit there and read the covers and say, damn, I sure wish somebody invented a record player. <laughs> In fact, David's group was so popular, they did a world tour. World tour. In those days, the entire known world was about the size of Vermont. Most of the fellas stood around on the corners and said, small world, ain't it? <laughs> when they returned from the world tour, David's group got a job working on the boat rides on Saturday. Noah had a boat. Noah would give boat rides. The boat would be crowded. The secret of the crowds would be Noah's advertising. Noah believed in strong advertising. The week before the ride, he'd put placards up all over town. And the placards would say, boat ride Saturday, it's gonna rain. <laughs> <laughs> People see that it's gonna rain and buy those tickets and get on that boat. And business was booming on the boat too. Noah's making money, Davis group's working. Then Noah went off his cookie, stopped bringing animals on the boat. <laughs> and the word got around town. Pretty soon all the fellas start saying, I'm not going on that boat. He's bringing animals on the boat. I'm not gonna pay three dollars and go on there with an animal. I was on there with a pig last week. <laughs> so they all started hanging out in a little jazz club, a place called Lazarus Bar. <laughs> Lazarus Bar was right across from the arena. And in those days, on Sunday, everyone went to the arena so they could watch the Christians and the Lions. Those Lions were undefeated. <laughs> you couldn't get a bet on a Christian in the arena. <laughs> Christians had a great coach, but the team was shaky. <laughs> One Sunday, everyone leaves the arena. They go over to Lazarus' place. David's group's on the bandstand. He's playing his big hit, Rock of Ages. <laughs> that was a big hit for David. David made a lot of money from that record. His girlfriend, Bathsheba, standing near the stage screaming, play on the harp, little David. Play on that harp, honey. What you say? Go on, little David. <laughs> Goliath came in with his gang. Goliath had a gang called the Philistines. They had leather jackets with their names on the back. Football helmets, they drink a lot of beer. They had motorcycle helmets. That's right, motorcycle helmets. No motorcycle, just the helmets. And Goliath started heckling David. And he comes up, he starts yelling, sing happy birthday, little David. Sing happy birthday. David said, knock it off, Goliath. Man, I'm trying to do a show. These people paid their money. They wanted to see a show. Now, knock that off. I go get the police. And Glyde said, you gonna get mad because I asked you to sing a little old jive happy birthday for me and the Philistines? <laughs> if I'd have slipped you $5, you'd have sung it. <laughs> David said, I'm going to get the police. When David turned his back to go toward the door, Glyde grabbed a club. She's running up behind David. She's gonna hit him with that club. What does a giant need with a club? Can you imagine what it's like to have a giant chase you with a club? Doesn't take a giant long to catch up with you. He's running up behind him. Hit him with that club. Try to tear his head off. Fast Sheba saw this and she screamed to warn David. She yelled, watch out, David. You better watch out, David. I'm telling you now. He running up behind you and he got a club. Don't hit you. Try to tear your head off. <laughs> David whirled around with the slingshot. Zap. Gave Goliath a zap with a rock right between the eyes. And Goliath fell and died. And all the people started laughing because David leaned over and said, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh! I'm not like a beautiful circus. On the reading? Seen me like it was a beautiful circus. <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> All kinds of flags waving and hurling uh, and jumping and pulling and falling and thumping and flipping and uh, It was very beautiful. The, chap, the lead drummer there owns one of the largest health farm in the valley. He gets a little too healthy once in a while, you see. <laughs> the lords, my ladies, this is Lincoln's day. I'm waiting for someone to tell me it isn't. <laughs> it's Lincoln's Day. Tomorrow should be Lincoln's Day, and the next day should be Lincoln's Day. They should have Lincolnville and Lincoln Park and Lincoln Lincoln, 
And it should be Lincoln Head City because he laid it down tight and right and cool and crazy. If they uh. could have stayed with it, it'd have been a guess. <laughs> We're pretty tight on it. We're pretty tight on it, but we can tighten up a little bit. We got to knock out the greed heads. <laughs> Lincoln didn't dig the greed heads. You understand what I mean? Like the supermarkets for one kick. <laughs> You remember the first supermarkets? They said, oh, the supermarket. They got on to bananas, bananas, we don't understand. You go in, yes, they trust you. Oh, yes, yes, What do you do? You get a car. You do? Well, where's the Oh, it's over there. Have you seen the Rodney? No, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> and then and you are pushing with the supermarket with the cart. You grab the cart, and you go strolling up and down the aisles, and you load up all your jazz, and you're working for them, see? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's all right. It's all right. Because you're getting, this is the beginning, very, very low, 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 low prices. <laughs> Savings, see? So you don't mind, you know, pushing a little bit. <laughs> and then, a few swings of miles, same supermarket, same card prices. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still pushing the mother card. <laughs> still working for them. <laughs> and you'll even take carts and push them into other carts. Show that you're, right? <laughs> it's amazing. But it's a charge, it's not a love you go, I wish I had the nerve to be a great thief. <laughs> that must be very exciting. I know a fellow with 17 sirloin steaks in his britches and you can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little chill before he gets out of the bed. <laughs> I can understand that, can't you? Oh, <laughs> oh it's a hanger. Hey, wouldn't dig that jazz. Well, it's a kick anyway, isn't it? What a great thing it is to be alive. My lords, my ladies, beloveds. Would it embarrass you very much if I were to tell you that I love you? <laughs> it embarrasses you, doesn't it? and bring back the finest vegetables in our town, and bring back the finest vegetables and arrange them in shapes. One mouthful, he would say to her, and no man could have been better. And then when she died, I said, Barry, take her home and let her look out at her garden, and in a few weeks she was gone. And we flew out there, we still had Kaif Sam and I, that means strength to you, Goyim. And we helped him pack, and his mother-in-law and his brother-in-law felt that we were too soon. And I said, he gave up his life, you didn't. His business, he left his children to take him to Europe. We got to get him back into the path of life. So when I left, he had a garage worse than my house, full of stuff, and he's still unpacking. But now he's become a Don Juan. He's looking for a 14-year-old with blonde hair down to her hips. Good one. So he has black, white, green, uh, Chinese, I want him to enjoy and I want him to barrel up, be free. Be free for the rest of your life. 
please, I beg you. Yeah, but what are you going to do, Fran? Are we going to set you up with somebody? No, don't you mention them. I'm sick of men making Google eyes of me. Every time I went out on the road, uh, oh, uh, Fran Lee, you're so attractive, and, you know, try and I'd say to them, if it was a My mother old, said, why can't you just be gracious and faith? I said, uh, when, Gre you. when Arabs would see me in a lobby, you know, sitting mm -hmm. after my dinner, I always ask for a table alone. I say to the waiter, don't. You know, a guy'd see me over there and he'd want to sit down because I dressed attractively. I'm not the ugliest woman. Please, nobody to my table, leave me alone. And I was all over the country alone. Sometimes I took Sam with me. An Arab invariably went for me in the lobby of a hotel. What it was, in two minutes, I'd tell him I'm a Jew. I'm anti PLO. I lost him. If it was a Gentile, I'd tell him I'm a Jew. And I have a husband of so-and-so years, I lost him. If they want to speak to me nicely and intelligently, mm -hmm. I'd love it. But if you're making Google eyes, if he was bad enough, the producers, they thought I had the greatest breasts in town. They used to make fun of me. Oh, what a figure, Fran. And I'd say, so, let's get on with it. You know, I'm not here for well, that. I'd love to have dated you before Sam back in the pictures when you were 15 or 16. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't, you would enjoy sex and feel better about it to this day. How do you know I don't? No, back because you advertise it so That's heavily. That's bullshit. That's why. You guys can't stand to think that a woman could have an orgasm with her husband. That's all I was putting here for. And, and, and I invented orgasm. the word orgasm. Tell Ruth Westheimer to shove it up her ass. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. That isn't what makes the world run around. If it is, then the Pope shouldn't be in the position he is, because if you're not a perfect human being without an orgasm, what the hell is he doing there? I, I always feel better when the other person is satisfied. That's the way I feel. I didn't satisfy Sam. He was a hot Hungarian. I know. My mother told me. I would bet sex once a year was enough for me. Well, sometimes sex can be a good therapy. For whom? For people. For you that invent it. I didn't invent it. I just enjoy it. Is that why Sam was always so angry? Mm-hmm. Mm. When the doctor found he was impotent, mm. I haven't told this to anyone, Sam. I know. My mother told me. I said to the doctor, pointed to his head and to his penis. I said, doctor, let's get one thing straight. I didn't marry that penis. I married Sam Weiss. What's in his brain? What if it had been shot off? What if he couldn't ever do it again? Was I supposed to abandon him? Just out of curiosity, you, you, you joke about not having sex for a year. Years. 20 while, while years. He, while, he was, while, he was, while he was able? No. Then? He was impotent for all. Now, I'm talking about when you were when 40 or 35. When he was able, once a week might have been enough for me. And was it enough for him? Never. So what did you do? Nothing. <laughs> he catered to your uh, coldness. Well, you were in lack of interest. Uh, you're calling it coldness and lack of interest. That's because most of you men have a prick in your brains instead of where it should be. Put your penis back where it belongs. An so, animal fucks, has its baby, and get on with living. But there are animals that are affectionate. If you watch monkeys, they're affectionate. I love for Sam to neck me, pet me, did hold he? me. Yes, but not enough. How come I never saw it? We, we, we weren't the kind of people that did that with the children. But why not? Why? Because we were not? brought up in an era where you didn't do it. But why? But that, doesn't it feel good to demonstrate your affection? He couldn't. I could. Okay, did I, I love you? Because you were very you affectionate. Were very affectionate. Okay. He now what couldn't. I'm pointing out is that your bitterness toward men results from the fact that not you had at all. My bitterness toward men was my father's unfaithfulness to my mother. Oh, and if he hadn't been unfaithful, you would have been sexual and, and uh, interested in in, in I might have been, from two years that's old. A, that's a mic, but there's obviously this, this real... No, I think that's very important. I think we now have the focus of Fran's antagonism towards sexuality, because she looked at it as a uh, an abandonment. And therefore, exactly. if somebody has... A, a, a feeling of sexuality and demonstrates it to someone who fulfills that sexuality more than the wife, her blind attachment is to the marriage by vow and bond with no regard for the pers personal reactions of the two people and the fact that that's what's important. The you feeling bullshit artists, the two of you, be married like me for 61 years and live like I do, then you shoot your mouth off. How many women have you screwed in your life and you can't find happiness? <laughs> and you, you bullshit artist. <laughs> I'm glad it's the two of us because you, you you're ganging up on me. <laughs> do, you, do you find that I speak with great bitterness toward women? How could you? You get screwed every night. No, I'm not. 
Well, you should be. Why should I? Because oh, your brain appears to be one prick. No, that's 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 your mind. This is called projection in in, in psychology. May I enjoy my spaghetti? Yeah, okay. and no more.